Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning, I'm Jeff Kellum, the Parish Associate at the Union Presbyterian Church in Endicott, and uh, welcome to Encounter this week. To be human is to um, express oneself through art. It's one of the things that makes us human, is the ability to, oh, I don't know, um, doodle in the, in the margins of a legal pad during a meeting, if there even are legal pads in meetings <laughs> anymore, uh, to tie a fly, to write a poem, to sing a song, to quilt a quilt. Uh, these are ways that we, we express ourselves and our attitudes and feelings. And in the faith traditions of which we are a part, you can't walk into a sanctuary or worship space of a mosque or a synagogue or a church without finding artistic expression. It may be the, uh, the, the worship area, the communion table or the altar has been uh, carved uh, out, of, out of a wonderful wood and presented as a gift to the church. Stained glass, a cantata, uh, a, a banner. These are all ways that people have expressed their faith. Uh, when my wife and I were in England uh, a few months ago, we found the Stations of the Cross fashioned out of bits of metal. Uh, and sometimes you had to use your imagination to say, oh, I know where, what that station depicts from this pile of metal that the artist has put together. It was very clear in their mind, and it was their way of expressing Jesus on the way to the cross. We were in another church, hundreds of years old, and they were, uh, I guess, preparing to clean the walls or something, and they discovered under a couple of layers of paint and dirt um, a, a larger-than-life picture of a man, a woman, and a baby. And the guide who was there told us that this was their way of expressing uh, or telling the story of the nativity at a time before people had Bibles and were literate. Mm -hmm. So they would paint on the wall of the church, and it's, they couldn't afford stained glass, so the painting was there, and they had somewhat restored it, it was still pretty primitive. Well, all of this is to say is that art is really so important in our lives and it also builds community. One of the things our church will be doing to celebrate its bicentennial this summer is an art project that's kind of odd. It's some sort of, uh, um, it's not chicken wire, it's more of a plastic um, mesh thing through which fabric will be pushed and then tied in the back. And when you finish, you've got several feet that, that show a religious symbol or design of some sort. Mm. And the beautiful thing about that, I'm taking a lot of time to do this. <laughs> the beautiful thing about that is that it builds community because it's not going to be done by an artist. It's going to be done by everyone who wants to come and push a little fabric and tie a little tie. And when it's finished, it will be a community project. The arts build community as well as uh, afford self-expression. My guest today, we finally got to it, is Anna Warfield, who is the executive assistant at the Broome County Arts Council. Hi, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Yeah. It's, good to, it's good to be here, uh, to see you here. Uh, the Broome County Arts Council, you've been there six months. Mm -hmm. You graduated with a BFA and uh, also... Uh, a, BS in communications. Uh, a BS in communications. Yeah. A lot of communications is BS. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> in fact, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you've been with the Arts Council for six months mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it does so much in the community mm -hmm. and supports so many different things from LUMA I understand you're yep. giving an, a, a grant to Luma. Yep. Let's start with a little bit about yourself first. Okay. You're an artist. I am. You're a, f you're a fiber yep. artist. I work with fiber and soft sculpture. So uh, <laughs> fiber is fabric? Fabric, textiles, um, ah. anything like that. Um, and basically what I do um, is I take fabric as my medium and I compose it in different ways. So I make books out of fabric um, to, and kind of, and soft sculptures. So they're, they're literally made out of fabric. Um, yes. And I'm using fabric as a tool to kind of um, soften the content of my work. Because a lot of times it can come off as kind of um, intense and gruff, but it softens it when you change the medium, yeah, shifts yeah. the meaning. And so when you entered Cornell, it was 
What, what was your intention? <laughs> uh, what, what was your vocational hope four years ago? Um, so I went to Cornell specifically for this program called Concurrent Degree um, because I knew that I wanted to expand both my artistic practice but also feed the, an internal need for like other stimulation. So the, the, the communications degree is a Bachelor's of Science so I was still heavily involved in um, like biology and math and statistics and things yeah. like that. Um, but then at the same time I was feeding the art side of my interest by pursuing the BFA and having a complete studio practice that um, engaged me in a very hands-on manner. So sure. I wanted to do both of those things and I didn't know ultimately where it would take me, but I like the path that I'm on. Yeah. Um, I think I'm very lucky to be where I'm at. So. Yeah. And, and when you came on the set, you looked behind you and, and there is the building yeah. where you work. We work right there, <laughs> 95 Court Street. Our artisan gallery is on the um, the Court Street side and our offices are on the upper floor on the Shenango Street side, so. That's yep. great, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right at home. Right at home. Standing here in, the, in Court Street as, <laughs> as, we, as we look at it. Yep. The um, Broome County Arts Council, your work there uh, um, encompasses what? what? What are some of the general themes and then we'll move toward more specifics. Yeah, so BCAC, um, we have a lot of initiatives going on right now, but one of our bigger initiatives um, is the United Cultural Fund, which just closed, and we actually allocated the funds to different organizations and artists um, in the area. Um, we announced um, mid-March um, that. Um, and so the United Cultural Fund um, opts to support um, large organizations and smaller projects in the community um, and some of those larger organizations, like you had mentioned, include now Luma, um, Roberson, Tri-Cities Opera, um, Binghamton Philharmonic, and uh, Goodwill Theater, to name a few. And then we support smaller projects from um, individual organizations and individuals that are doing things related to the arts. So we have Safe Streets, it's a new one. They're doing um, a mural project or a renovation project, um, as well as the YWCA. Um, they're working on a garden. We do Cornell Cooperative Extensions. Um, uh, Moses Hos Hogan celebration, yeah. um, that project, all of these things, um, trying to branch out into the community. And like you have mentioned, we really value community um, and their in and the community's engagement with the arts and also providing arts opportunities for the community to kind of enliven it um, and keep it alive, yes, <laughs> yes. keep it thriving. And when you look at, at things like the Binghamton Philharmonic, mm -hmm. now here is a city that uh, was much larger when, when I was yep. growing up here, um, a city that has um, had some economic difficulties in the past, but it still has a philharmonic. Mm -hmm. And it has a decent philharmonic. Yeah. And then it has the Tri-Cities Opera, which has been going uh, since I was a little kid, before yeah. that probably, I, I don't know how old it is, <laughs> but, um, but it's so well regarded. Um, one of my neighbors moved um, the story is told, he moved into the community. He'd been in part of New York City where he'd go to the Met. And, and he said, here I am in, in Binghamton. And, but he went to the Tri-Cities Opera and said, this is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, maybe not world class, but um, or maybe it is. I don't, I don't know opera, so I can't tell you. But, but these are the larger organizations, uh, musical organizations. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned the Roberson, yep. uh, which is another treasure. Yeah. Uh, which is sometimes called the Roberson. Roberson. But I grew up the Roberson. <laughs> I grew up the Roberson too. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the Roberson, of course, uh, has is more than just art galleries. It's mm -hmm. it's got um, uh, it's got trains. I yeah. love, love the train. <laughs> it's got trains. <laughs> so those are some of the larger organizations. But tell me about some of the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. Can can you call some of the the grants to smaller uh, projects? Yep. So, um, for instance, we work with Copernic Society. They received a grant this year, um, and they're doing um, a reiteration of a film project that they continually do. And so the smaller grants specifically um, go towards a like delineated project. So it can be an organization that doesn't necessarily um, cater directly to art specifically, but they have a project that is arts based in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's the Copernic Society. I believe yeah. it's called. Is that the part of the Copernic Observatory? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and, um, and who else do we have? The Vestal Museum. So, like, they are very historically based, um, but they have recently opened a studio space in the back room, um, and, and they received a grant this year as well. Um, Bundy Museum of History and Art, they received um, a grant to do a musical uh, First Friday, live from First Friday, a musical rendition um, that kind of repeats, huh. and so that'll continue or help them to, to push through those initiatives as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. 
The, um, the smaller grants are, are things that people have gotten an idea, um, they need a little bit of funding mm -hmm. to provide the foundation for it, mm -hmm. and, and then what is their responsibility to the Arts Council when, when they've completed it? Yeah. So basically what happens is in exchange for the funds that we allocate to them um, through a paneling process, um, we give them our logo and ask that they just show that we so help support ah. them in some capacity and then at the end um, they they report back to us with um, how many people arrived, what was the actual like event like um, and just kind of tell us how it went and right. we go back and forth and we analyze and for the next year we kind of reevaluate like if someone's applying for the same grant again for the similar project, like how did it go? Um, Scott Danzig is a film uh, maker producer who uh, has gotten, he got a grant last year with us for the film Perfection and this year he got another grant uh, for the film Success. Um, and so he, um, it's a portion of his overall budget um, and at the end of it we get to go see that film and we're invited to that film. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So the, the uh, this is a part of their funding and then they are required of course, in many things, you have to mm -hmm. go out and find other funding as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, you mentioned First Friday, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people are familiar with the whole First Friday project. Uh, do you, yeah. How long has it been going? Oh, know? I don't actually know how long it's been going, but I know, um, I know that we are more deeply engaged in it now than I think we have been in uh, past years um, with our new artisan gallery storefront um, located as I had mentioned on Court Street, 95 yeah. Court Street there. Um, so we have moved recently, um, five months ago, <laughs> um, we moved from uh, Stephen Square to uh, 81 State to 95 Court Street um, and we opened this new gallery location. So we are right um, on ground level and it has really changed First Friday for us at least, um, yeah. these last five that we've had. Um, and so just past Friday, um, we had our first Friday opening for April with the Emerging Artists series, um, which uh, showcases artists who are in different schools in the area regionally, um, high school artists to engage them. And we have Scott Yurko coming up in the next month. Um, but First Friday is really meant to um, bring us closer to the community and vice versa. It's a night where everyone um, in the community who's aware of First Friday knows that these art spaces will be open and available and have things happening for them so that if you are from rural parts of the county that you can come to Binghamton, Endicott, Johnson City um, and see these different venues and know that they are working and doing yeah. things. Uh, and when you talk about the, the art space, we're tr are we talking primarily visual arts? Um, it can be, but you will always find um, musical arts and performance happening around, especially when we get towards the summer months. Um, you'll see things happening closer on the street level, um, doors open and music happening. Atomic Toms always has music going, right? right. Um, yeah. And for us in particular, we've decided that for our First Fridays, we're going to pair up with different um, performance and musical groups on First Friday in particular. So we had the um, Binghamton Youth Symphony Orchestra with us on Friday for the Emerging Artists Exhibition. And that's something that we plan to continue doing yes. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's um, the 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 first Friday is an opportunity for people to expose themselves to different galleries mm -hmm. that perhaps they've never seen before, and that rotates. They're, are, are they all the same every Friday, or are they the exhibitions them? change? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the gallery locations um, we're, we're pretty we're pretty grounded where we are in particular. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, every Friday we at least we have a new exhibition. Some galleries might have like a two month run for an exhibition, but they might have something a little different happening that night. Um, yeah. And, and how far does this extend geographically within the city? Uh, are we talking a few blocks? or? We oh no, this extends pretty far. So there's a trolley that runs um, around um, between areas to try and get you to places like like from the Phelps I to the no Roberson to the, yeah, yeah, to the different yeah. areas. Huh. Um, yeah, um, there's a, brand, or a, a brochure that's put out by the Gorgeous Washington Street Association that kind of lists in a two month um, duration what's going to be happening and what first Friday venues will be open right. and available. <laughs> and then that takes me to the art walk because I think of first Friday as being walking from place to place. Yeah. The art walk is something new, is that right? The art walk. Yeah, isn't it? What? The Art Trail, Broom Art, art trail. trail. Yes, okay, that's we got it. there. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Broom I'm Art sorry. Trail, that's, no, that's good. You could yeah. keep me on my toes. Right, right. Um, the Broom Art Trail is another initiative that we've taken up in the last six months here. Um, 
we, it's a it's a trail, so it's the first ever broom art trail. And if you look to regions around us, um, Ithaca and the Finger Lakes region, they have an art trail where yes. you know that on this weekend, again, these venues will be open and accessible to the public. And so, um, counter to First Friday, which happens every month, this is going to be an our inaugural year, just a weekend, um, June first and second, um, from 12 to 4. Um, these specific venues will be open, and instead of uh, condensing these spaces into like one centralized location which is kind of what First Friday is. Um, we are expanding into like Whitney Point and Windsor and trying to get the rural communities really involved as well yes. but also having Binghamton and Johnson City and you know Bestel and Endicott like involved. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is new and we're really excited about it. In our first uh, run here, we have over 100 participating artists and arts organizations, which is amazing. Um, yeah, and for our For the map, first time, that's really For wonderful. the first time, yeah, yeah, there was a huge like uptick um, and excitement and eagerness. And I have to say, Joanne Thorne Arnold and David Arnold, you guys did an amazing job just driving this home. Yeah. Um, and we're in the last legs here, so June's coming up, so it's a... It's a lot in progress, but yes. we're very excited. So. Yeah, so basically, this will be like a map. It right? will you be have a, a map. printed map mm -hmm. that will be very artistically designed, I'm sure. Yes. And then it will it will point you to various destinations. You can't possibly do them all Probably within a not. short time. No. Yeah. So you're going to want to look at the map. And what we've done is we've um, we've collected a number of um, image samples as well. So you'll be able to kind of gauge, like, okay, maybe I'm more interested in painting, or maybe I'm a sculptor and I want to see some woodwork. Um, and you'll be able to look at the map and kind of see, like, who's doing what where, and maybe those are the places that I want to target and go to. But yeah, right now, Artistry by Design, Rachel Jenks, thank you, who also did our rebrand mm -hmm. and our new logo, is working out the map component for us. Um, and that should be out soon. We hope to also have it online to make that accessible to everyone. And Carousel is helping us with that as well. <laughs> it's a very involved, very community-driven effort. So yeah. we're very grateful for all right. that. Our, our guest today on Encounter is uh, Anna Warfield. And she is the executive assistant at the Broome County Arts Council. And we're talking about the work of the Arts Council as it builds community as well as uh, encourages self-expression mm -hmm. through art and communication. Uh, uh, we mentioned briefly the Moses Hogan uh, concert. Um, this is co-sponsored by the Broome County Council of Churches. Oh, yeah. Which happens to be, um, you know, one of our <laughs> sponsors here, too. A Moses Hogan celebration featuring Derek Lee Reagan. And it will be on May 18th mm -hmm. at uh, 7 p.m. at the Trinity Episcopal Church. So the Binghamton High School Chorus and the Trinity Episcopal Church um, and the Tabernacle Choirs mm -hmm. are all going to join together to celebrate the work of this African-American mm -hmm. composer and, um, and sing some of his songs. And then his, his niece? No, his daughter. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> a, a relative of Moses Hogan, Hogan yes. <laughs> will be there, which is, which is wonderful. So um, that's, that's an exciting thing. And the Broome County Arts Council provided a grant to help this to help, help us along. Yep. We're really excited about it. So yep. we'll see you there. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to put it on my calendar. Mm -hmm. The Moses Hogan celebration on May 18th at Trinity Church. When um, the Arts Council uh, is looking at new projects, what are the criteria, uh, generally speaking? I know we can't talk about particular uh, uh, grants and so on, mm -hmm. but What's most helpful uh, to, to fund in the community? To in the encourage? smaller projects? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. things that we're looking for, um, well, first of all, the criteria state that it has to be something that happens in Broome County. So these are very Broome County specific. I am the Broome County Arts Council and yeah. we are in Broome County. Um, yep. So we look for um, projects that will benefit the community specifically within Broome County. So that's your constraint. Um, um, and then we're looking for like reach. Who are you looking to like um, engage with? Like what's your audience and how will this benefit the community as a whole? Right. Um, yeah, so we, we look for a breadth of projects when we are looking to fund. Um, and again, this isn't me deciding, it's not Nancy deciding my ED, it's um, an allocations panel who looks through all of the grants that are submitted. And we try our best to um, put grants in as many places as possible because we find that the smaller grants that we do distribute do a lot. Um, a lot of community uh, come to those events. Yeah. Um, yeah. And your panel is made up of people who have a broad uh, I guess, experience in the arts, yep. visual, so the, musical. Yeah, we try to. Um, our panel shifts. Um, I believe it's a two-year commitment for the panel. And um, 
the panel this year was comprised of many artists um, as well as just community members. We had some board members on there. Um, yeah, and we try and get people that are interested in all areas, all facets of it, because it all each and every form of art is important to the community, um, sure. we feel. So we don't want to like put one against the other and you know, we want to keep them kind of equally supported. Sure, yeah. sure. And I'm uh, uh, thinking about the uh, the, the work that you do as an administrator, <laughs> uh, do you still have time to do your own art? Yeah, I mean, it's challenging. Um, to, I, I guess like we've mentioned before, I just graduated a year ago, so to shift from having a set schedule um, that included studio time, yeah. that was that was a hard shift to make. But I make time now. It's, you know, I work 9 to 6, or 10 to 6, sometimes 9 to 6, here I am. Um, <laughs> right. But after hours is my art hours. Um, on weekends, I travel a lot to go to shows or to deliver artwork or to shop for materials and work on things like that. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. making yeah. it work. Yeah. It's just a different different schedule. One would think too that when folks avail themselves of the opportunities of the various galleries, uh, concerts, um, and, and you're exposed to, to new things. You know, when, when people think of an art gallery, they're thinking of, probably the great works of art uh, mm -hmm. and and they're they're looking at some contemporary things saying I don't understand this <laughs> uh, but the artist did one would think and one would hope that after after being exposed to this art it kind of says to you maybe maybe you could do some of the stuff too mm -hmm. so how do people um, express themselves uh, I, I, how do you broach uh, that yeah, uh, yeah I mean you you want to encourage people to say look don't let what that second grade teacher told you about blue flowers uh, affect, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, if you want to make blue flowers, make blue flowers, guys. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. no, you just do that. Um, I think I think community, like we've been talking about today a lot, um, encouragement does a lot for that. Um, like for me, I grew up in a household that was very artistic and I was supported by everyone around me. I was never deterred. Um, and so I think that's why I felt this comfort to step into that. And so that's kind of what we want to do at BCAC is create this space that uh, comforts and encourages and celebrates the arts for young individuals and for individuals who are at any age really, yeah. um, to say that you can you can do this, you can, you, we, and we support you, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, you, you grew up in a family of artists and I, I mean, I, <laughs> My mother was a, a, a portrait artist yeah. with, with uh, pastels. Um, I have a couple of things in the attic that she did, and then we've got some other things on the walls that she did. Um, and my dad um, never uh, was considered himself an artist, uh, but one day he thought, well, I'm, uh, if Beverly can do this, I can do this. So he, he got uh, some oil paints and he got the canvas, a little maybe uh, 12 by 15 or something. And he painted a pagoda at <laughs> sunset. Wow. Well, it was wonderful. And he said, well, did it. Can't do anything better than that. And that's the last thing he ever painted. There you go. <laughs> so there it is. I'm, I'm sure that uh, one of my sisters has it probably. And, and But um, it is a, a way for us not only to express ourselves and our feelings and, and um, my brother and I are photographers. So, you know, we have an eye for things, but mm -hmm. we certainly don't use um, yeah, different. manifests in different ways for but, sure. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so there are ways. I mentioned tying flies. You know, a, a fisherman just doing this little. Mm -hmm. It becomes an artistic expression and, yeah. and helps us, I think, in many ways, uh, to to be better people and to make the community better. Mm -hmm. The um, arts council uh, has given away uh, through this United Cultural Fund. Uh, $227,969. Mm -hmm. That was just last year? This was just in, in March, actually. This was our 2019 campaign. So the wow. funds were brought together in 2018 um, and into 2019, and then the pot was allocated. Um, and so it'll benefit, this, this money benefits the community now through 2019. Okay, so now looking toward next year. 2020. <laughs> what what do people do to uh, what what is your website? Yep, we are broomarts.org. Um, broomarts.org. Yep, okay. um, in our 2020 United Cultural Fund campaign, I believe we're actually going to start with a fundraiser in May, so yeah. coming up here. Um, but you can donate there, um, and there should be a link that says donate, and then further down it will delineate to which 
place and it'll right. be 2020 United Cultural Fund. You can also donate to Broome County Arts Council, <laughs> right. um, just our general operations. But yeah, so in May we are hoping to kick off with a fundraiser. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so these uh, these fundraisers will help interpret the programs for the next year and help build Help build up year the, by year. the funds, yep, yep for yep. year by year. These, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of money, and it's all come from... It comes from community, it comes from foundations, it comes from different grants and places, but the community is a huge contributor to this pot as well. We didn't even mention, we have a couple of minutes left, the, the veterans projects. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about that? Because I know some of our viewers and listeners will be interested in. Yeah, so we are, we had, I believe it has just closed now, but uh, we work with different groups and people and organizations and we just brought um, to and just took down at the um, county exec's office um, in the legislature um, this uh, Vietnam show um, to kind of uh, commemorate the work of a, a, a soldier who had documented his time in the war wow. um, effort and so what we try and do is we try and we are very proud of the breadth of work that we kind of bring into the county and bring into our space but this one in particular was an amazing show um, yeah so we try and do outreach and the same with our author showcases we attempt to like bring in different artists with different backgrounds or different writers and poets and things with different backgrounds and we just had Chris Mikowski um, who is a historian um, of the Civil War speaking on his uh, recently published works or um, yeah yeah. So we try and we try and encourage and celebrate and um, bring in different communities as well. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's it's a tremendous program, uh, n not only because it supports the arts, which a lot of us are very interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we go to the No Theater, and we, I certainly go to the Firehouse Stage for its music yeah. and so on. And um, to know that that we have a central organization that helps support all these artists, uh, whether they are performance artists or, or quietly working in their own space. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing. So thank you for, for your work there. Thank you. Our, our guest today has been Anna Warfield, <laughs> uh, whom I have not called by her sister's name uh, once <laughs> in the program. Um, she is the executive assistant for the Broome County Arts Council. And once again, the, uh, the, the uh, website is broomarts.org. Broomarts.org. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, full disclosure, um, this is my cousin's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us for Hi, um, the, Encounter, <laughs> the Encounter program uh, presented by the Brim County Council of Churches in association with WBNG-TV. And with thanks to Town Square Media for airing the audio portion of our program. I'm Jeff Kellum, Parish Associate at the Union Presbyterian Church in Endicott, hoping that in the coming week, you will be gentle with people and with yourself.